Today we will be installing Drupal 6.6 on Windows Server 2008 using IIS 7. The first question you may have is why do this? Why even bother? Well if you already have a Windows Server in place and you're successful at configuring as a web server, you're most of the way there at being successful at running PHP applications. One of the most welcome new features of Windows Server 2008 is the ability to install or remove roles and features from the command line. You can do so by using Server Manager CMD and specifying the roles or features that you want to install. You can also specify an XML file. I've created an XML file with all of the required roles, role services, and features we need to install and configure PHP, Drupal, and be able to to use the scripts that have been developed. We see here that we're going to be installing the web server. We're also going to be supporting .NET as well as PHP. There's also a requirement to have an SMTP server locally or in the local network in order to be able to send out notifications. So we're also going to install the SMTP server. I have a number of PowerShell scripts that I'm going to use to complete our configuration. So I'm also going to install the PowerShell feature. Let's run this server manager command and specify this XML file that I've created. Now that we've successfully installed the web server role and the required role services to support not only .NET but also PHP, we also need to apply an update. This update was released in August of 2008 and addresses some issues that were found in this fast CGI module. You could find a link to this update in the notes that goes along with the screencast. We are now ready to download and configure PHP. If you go to php.net Go to the downloads and you want to download the latest PHP zip package, not the installer. Once you have the zip package downloaded, go ahead and extract that to a well-known path. The path that I'm using in my demo is C PHP. Upon extracting the PHP binaries on your local system, you'll notice that there is no php.ini file created for you. This file is used to really define how PHP works on your system. In the zip file that you've extracted, there is a php.ini-recommended file. This is really a baseline where you could use it to create your PHP INI file. That's exactly what we're going to do. I've written a PowerShell script that will take and read in the PHP INI dash recommended file. It's going to go in and find a couple different options and uncomment them, such as it's going to enable the MySQL DLL extension. I'm also going to modify the extension directory from uh, dot forward slash to the actual path on the local system. There's also a couple other options that are recommended to change to improve performance. And we're going to do that with this PowerShell script. Let's go ahead and run this PowerShell script. PHP is now configured. We still though need to configure IIS to be able to handle PHP requests. We do this by adding a handler mapping. This can be done through the GUI in the IIS manager or through the app command command on the command line. I prefer doing it from the command line. I've put together this script. This script will add these handler mappings as well as adding the default document of index.php and for good measure removing IIS start.htm as one of the default documents. Let's go ahead and run this command. And now it's completed. Now that IIS is configured, we can test to make sure PHP is working. Earlier, I created a PHP info file that will return information about PHP on the machine.
Let's copy this to the web directory. Now we could open Internet Explorer and browse the local host to this PHP info file. Here we have the PHP version, the machine name, and other information about how PHP is configured and working on this local machine. Hang in there. A couple minutes longer and we'll have a working copy of Drupal running in IIS 7. What I've done is I've gone out to drupal.org, I've downloaded the latest build of Drupal, and then extracted it using WinRAR into our web root folder. There's a couple other tasks that we're going to need to do in order to get up and running. We're going to need to copy the default.settings.php file into just being the settings.php file. Then we're going to have to give the IIS user permissions to modify this file. We're also going to need to create a files folder. This is going to give a place for Drupal to store temporary files, so we're going to need to give it modify permissions to that folder. Let's go ahead and run this script. Great. We're now to the point where we can start configuring Drupal. I've pointed in Night Explorer to localhost forward slash install.php. I'm going to choose English. And now I've prompted to put in the information on what database to use. The database we created earlier was Drupal DB, the username of Drupal, and a super secret password. Now I can click save and continue. So now it has configured the web site database. Now it's giving me additional information. I'm going to call this the coffee filter. Put the webmaster create an administrator account. and another super secret password. We'll click save and continue. We've now completed the installation and we now have a fully functional Drupal website. We can now administer it by changing themes, adding content, adding other modules such as forums or a shopping cart and really take full advantage of the Drupal engine. To summarize our installation process, we installed IS7 and required role services. We downloaded and configured PHP. We then updated the FastCGI module and configured the FastCGI module to run PHP. We then installed and configured MySQL and it created a database. We then extracted and configured Drupal and now we have Drupal running on IIS 7 natively.